Hey everyone, welcome back to a Grim Dawn Basics video. Today we are going to be talking about the components in the game. I'm gonna go through, I think, all of the components. I'm fairly certain I've grabbed them all up. Um, if I'm missing one, please let me know. Um, there are a lot in the game, and I'm not actually gonna, like... Well, I am probably just gonna mention each one real quick. But I'm not actually going to be talking about everyone in detail unless it's something that really requires the detail. A lot of the components also have similar effects, so if I point out something, I will try not to repeat the pointing out of the thing. Um, so, components in the game are either dropped by monsters or you craft them. Crafted components... Um, I think you can pretty much craft everything in the game component wise. I'm sure there's some you're missing But a lot of the rarer ones you'll have to find a blueprint for before you can actually make them And they won't drop in the world otherwise a couple of them like I think haunted steel is one is super super rare as a drop and then will actually um, Be easier to craft so starting with components um Aether Souls are a amulet and metal component. They give you a tiny bit of Aether damage, Aether res, and less damage from Aetherials. It's good if you have an Aether build or if you need the Aether res. I generally skip them though for some of the better rarer ones you can put in your amulet and metal. Aether Steel Bolts are for guns, crossbows, and caster offhands. The, except for the lightning versions, um, the ammo gives you an attack ability and the stones will give you a aura the lightning is reversed and in this case the ability is called aether tendril it launches out a single aether tendril that hits a target and deals damage to them and slows them it also reduces the resistances um the ability is only okay um i haven't found a use for it they're better aether abilities and um I think this would be better if you channeled it, maybe, or if it, it hit a bigger area, because it pretty much just is one target takes damage. Um, if you are running some sort of ranged Aether thing, though, I mean, Aether Steel Bolts might be a way to go for that component. Um, Amber is used in melee weapon shields and caster offhands. It gives you the ability Empowered Lightning Nova. And Empowered Lightning Nova, and from Cracked Low Zones, there is just Lightning Nova, is a great leveling ability and can actually be made into a main ability at the end of the, ga end of the game. Lightning Nova, um, it's a Nova. You just hit it and it makes a Nova Burst. Um, it can be really potent with a Lightning Bolt, Lightning Build as a sort of main attack while everything else is on cooldown. Um, and it, it is also really great for leveling, especially the Cracked Lodestone version um, is a really solid beginning attack. If you, Once you hit level 7, you can throw a Cracked Lodestone in your weapon, focus on defensive abilities, and when you get up to level 20, you can throw the Empowered, um, the Amber, the Empowered Lightning Nova into your weapon, and just use those as an attack until you get better things, and until you get more points. Anti-Venom himself is health regen, armor, and poison acid res. Um, it's a great component. It, it's used in all armor. It's used in... I use it a lot on belts and helmets. Um, it's really great for showing up that poison acid resistance, which is sometimes hard to get. Like, this character has a Tinker's Ingenuity and still only goes up to 55 in ultimate. Ballistic Plating is a chest piece only um, component. Defensive ability, 10% chance to avoid projectiles, and 18 armor. I really love ballistic plating. Getting 10% avoidance for all projectile attacks incoming is really cool. Um, it's it's really rare to get avoidance, and it stacks really well as a defensive ability. So I actually think um, ballistic plating is kind of a go-to chest component for me. If I don't have anything else I want to throw in there, I mean, this character has it. Um, if I have nothing else I want to throw on the chest, um, if I have nothing specific I'm going for, I'll go for ballistic plating. Better Shell is Physique and Shield Block Chance and it grants the ability Shield Slam. Um, this is a very, very starter component. It gives you a Shield Bash. Um, it's pretty basic as well. It's just a little Physique. Your Shield has a higher chance to block. Um, 
and it gets replaced later by reinforced shell not vicious spikes I know I have one I just don't remember if it was common or not oh yeah and obviously there's a there's sort of a common and a rare um yeah no that's shared a bear nath um serrated shells i'm thinking of it gives you brutal shield slam but yeah um you'll get that shield slam again if you're sort of in melee this can kind of act like the and using a shield it can kind of act like um lightning over for your character oh black tallow i didn't put a black tallow in it i don't have a complete black tallow huh okay black tallow is like aether soul it is Chaos damage, chaos res, and less damage from Chitonix. Um, you use it for a chaos build, or if you need the chaos res. Blessed Steel is weapons, shields, and caster offhands again. Um, it deals flat. You get flat elemental damage, percent elemental damage. You convert your physical to elemental damage, and you get some offensive ability. And then you have access to the ability called Shadow Strike. Your character does like the big um, overhead slash, um, and it hits the enemy for a lot of elemental damage. Just a lot of damage to one target. It's a really, really strong single target attack. And it reduces the enemy's resistances. Um, Sacred Strike is great if you have a character that's heavily elemental based. Generally, it's going to be in melee. And you want an attack that is sort of a... That thing needs to die. Slash, take a lot of damage. I'm going to deal a lot of damage to that thing. Um, the Sacred Strike is for you. Blessed Whetstone increases your armor piercing by 50%, gives you bleeding damage and more offensive ability, and it gives you the ability Behead. So Behead, it's an arc, arc attack ability. Um, it deals a, a lot of damage, just a lot of main hand damage and physical damage, and it has a chance to deal a lot more bleeding damage. Behead is great if you've got a bleed damage build. It's only used in axes and swords. It's one of the few things that has that requirement, um, of like a very specific weapon requirement. Um, and it's actually kind of a really strong of a attack. I don't know if you can make it a main attack though. It usually works best in rotation when you have like a knight blade slash bl like blade master or anything that's a knight blade based around bleeding where you're using the, uh, the proccing abilities. From like say Blade Master or the the Soldier and the Night Blade, you know Blade Master, and you're you're kind of combining those together with abilities that go on cooldown. Bristly Fur is health and percent Constitution. Um, it's handy earlier when you don't really have a a good like source of extra Constitution if you really want it. Generally, I skip on Bristly Fur. I mean, I have 75 of it. Um, you could maybe put it in a slot if you don't need anything else there. And it does work really well earlier on. Chilled Steel. You get flat cold damage, percent cold damage, physical damage converted to cold damage. Um, you get Ice Spike, which is a little tiny projectile that sort of just goes... Um, it deals some cold damage. It slows. It's not that impressive. It's a little along the lines of the uh, Aether Tendril from Aether Steel Bolts. Kind of a okay ability. You might find use for it early on, but probably not later. Chip Claw gives you just slam. Um, it's physical and physical damage, and then the ability is single target. You'll just smack it for a chunk of damage. Um, I mean, it's not anything crazy overpowered. It's a little bit like Sacred Strike. In fact, I think it uses the same like overhead animation chop. Um... Cold Stone is going to be, if you're building a cold build and you don't need resistances, probably a go-to. Weapon shields, caster off hands, you get cold aura, or chill aura. Um, you get, you know, it's an AoE, anything that enters in, into it, it's an AoE centered on you, it's always on. They'll take cold damage, you deal more cold damage with your attacks, and there's a chance to slow whenever the proc hits. Consecrated wrappings used in hand armor only you get some chaos damage and attack speed good early on um, For bonus attack speed especially if you're a witch blade kind of falls off later on um, It's actually used a lot in crafting if I recall too Corpse dust rings amulets and metals you get percent health some health regen and some vitality resist resistances resistance um, <laughs> 
I have this character using two of them because he needed the extra health. Uh, it's it's always a handy thing if you don't need regen on your rings. You can just throw these in there because 6% extra health is 6% more damage you can take before you die. Crack Lodestone, I mentioned before, the Lightning Nova is great early on. Death Shield Bolts give you greater ice spike. Um, again, it's the same same type of thing as what happens on the Cold Stone. Just a line of ice. It's it's only okay. It just is only okay with more damage. Ectoplasm is sort of the first thing you can use to get more energy regen. Two energy regen per second plus 20% energy is really handy. It goes in head, rings, amulet, and metals. Um, really, really solid for getting like shoring up your regen early on. And actually, you can probably use them in the end game as well to get your regen built up. Though there's one later on that probably does better. So Enchanted Flint, um, do I not have a, I don't have a complete one. This one gives you the Fire Aura. Um, I think it has a chance to just deal fire, more fire damage. Um, I, can I make two of them real quick? So it's, uh, it's like the Cold Aura, it is, you gain more fire. Um, oh, I can make 37 of them. It's uh, it's more, more of your elemental damage type. Um, yeah, chance to burn enemies when they enter into it. They'll take the fire damage and they have a chance to be burned. Flint core bolts give you greater fire blast. I is it? It's not molten skin. Searing ember, I think. Searing ember will give you fire blast. This, like the ice spike, is only okay. Um, I've heard some people can build around it. Um, oh, right. It doesn't have a cooldown. Okay, yeah. I think you just spam fireballs is the thing. So, yeah. You might be able to build around this a little better than Ice Spike. Ice Spike doesn't have a cooldown. I thought they both had cooldowns. So, you might... That might be a little easier to build around than I thought. Because the, uh... The Aether Tendril has the cooldown on it. Which is why it's kind of eh. So yeah, I, greater Ice Spike, greater Fire Blast. You might be able to build around them um, a little better than I'm assuming you could. So a Focusing Prism is used in Amulets Only. It gives you bonus crit damage, spirit, and skill energy cost reduction. Pretty handy. I, th I personally think um, Arcane Lenses are a little better, but they're still pretty good if you don't have Arcane Lenses. Um, they're kind of rarer on the drop, though. Uh, might be a little hard to get. They're handy if you're using something that's got like a high energy cost, like say Albrecht's Aether Ray. Um, otherwise, they're pretty just pretty handy for that crit damage. So Frozen Hearts go in your rings. They give you health, cold res, and reduced freeze duration. If you plan on fighting a lot of cold things and maybe you want this on swap, um, or you can swap the the rings out if you're fighting like lots of Muzalex. Um, that's a pretty handy thing to pick up. Otherwise, it's mostly used for, I think there's a Devotion Shrine that requires them, and crafting. Hellsbane Ammo gives you the Lightning Aura. There's a chance enemies will be stunned by it. Um, this is where it's a little weird in that the Lightning Ammo gets the Aura and the Lightning Items get the attack. Um, Hallowed Fang gives you Blood Drinker. It's a vitality damage based thing. Has a little um, attack damage converted to health. Physical converter vitality, a little bit of life leech, chance of life leech. Um, but the blood drinker ability, you pop this. If you're fighting a melee, you pop it, and you get a lot of life steal, which is pretty handy, in all honesty. It's also not that hard to get. Imbued silver is weapons, shields, offhands. I'm probably not going to mention that a lot when this pops up, because it, it's actually really common to have weapon, shield, offhands um, for components. So Imbued Silver is one of my go-tos. It gives you defensive ability, bleeding resistance, more damage to Chthonics, and it gives you an aura that when you turn it on gives you more chaos res. I run it on this character. I run it on a lot of characters because it just gives you bleeding and chaos res, which is pretty important in Ultimate. Um, Leathery Hide is health, armor, and reduced stun duration. It only is used in helmets. Um, I would probably go for a resistance thing over this, but if you have an open slot in your helmet, um, you can go for Leathery Hide. 
So, uh, Mark of Illusions, I think, is a little better than Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm gives you more energy regen, but generally speaking, if you need energy regen, you're either playing like a soldier that can't get it, usually normally, or you're playing a caster character, where this bonus elemental damage and spirit is going to be pretty nice for you. And, um... It also gives you the energy regen. So I generally lean Mark of Illusions for my casters and their energy regen um, components. Mark of the Traveler goes in your boots. It gives you health regen, movement speed, and slow resistance. Um, they're pretty much a good go-to for... I think they may be the go-to, because there's another one, Mark of Mogdragon, but uh, Mark of the Traveler is just so much more common. You'll probably end up with it in your boots. So, Molten Skin using all armor. It is armor, fire res, and reduced um, burn duration. Um, if you need the fire res, this is your go-to fire res thing. Uh, mutagenic Iker. It's poison and acid. Um, poison and acid damage. And physical converted to acid damage. And it gives you poison bomb, which you throw... I think it's like you just lob a bomb and just poof. It's poison. Um, pro it, it's a bit like a weak Dreeg's evil eye. So you're probably not going to use it a lot if you're doing poison acid regardless. Uh, mutated scales are awesome. They go shoulder, chest, leg, and hand armor. Just a flat 180 health, and on top of that, 3% health. Um, I am not using them on this guy, but they are great for especially the pant slot. Um, or if you don't want to go for ballistic plating, you can use them in the shoulder slot. Um, hand armor usually has a thing in it. But yeah, uh, great for your pants. Um... Really, really solid component. Polished Emeralds are like the basic, most easy to get component. They'll give you eight physique, cunning, and spirit. Early on, they're helpful for showing up your stats, but honestly, I think they're only really used for the legendary crafting um, at that legendary uh, blacksmith guy in um, Tyrant's Hole. Purified Salt, another one of my go-tos. You'll get some defensive ability, life leech resistance. You'll deal more damage to Aetherials, and you get the Aether Ward Aura, which is more Aether resistance. Really, really great for characters that can't get Aether resistance. Aether Res is probably on the low end of necessary resistances. Possibly it's your least needed resistance, but um, it's still handy to have something that you can just go and pick it up and throw it on the thing, and you get more Aether Res. Uh, the Radiant Gem is shields and offhands. You'll get more elemental damage and conversion and some elemental res. And you get an ability called Radiant Shield, which is you'll gain 30% more elemental res with 10% maximum elemental res for its duration. It's a really great defensive component. You will get a little DPS off of its, na off of its um, native bonuses. And then the ability, you activate it. And it's sort of a, it's not a panic button, but if you know you're coming up against elemental enemies, you can pop it and you'll get, you'll, you'll take less damage. So, um, huh, Reinforced Shell gives you Blade Ward, and Blade Ward gives you more Pierce Res. It is like the Radiant Gem ability, um, you have to activate it, it's not an aura. The um, Reinforced Shell itself gives you more block chance, and your shield will block more damage. Good go-to early on if you're planning on using a shield. Resilient Plating is just Defense, Armor, and Pierce Res. If you need Pierce Res, you go for that. Restless Remains, um, used in Hand Armor. It gives you Energy Casting Speed and a chance to retaliate um, with Health Reduction. Uh, pretty interesting, but um, to me there's more better things you can put in your, your hand armor, but if you really want the casting speed and chances to have that little bit of weird reduction, weird retaliation reduction thing, um, you could probably go for it. Riftstone is the chaos version of all of the stones I've mentioned before. It'll give you chaos damage and fizz converted to cast damage. Its ability is awesome. It is essentially shadow strike from the Nightblade tree, but it does chaos damage. You can actually convert the chaos damage into aether damage if you have a build that does that. Um, generally speaking though, it is for the chaos damage dealers only. Um, though not necessarily. I would say it leans towards them, but if you do want to teleport on your character and you can't get one through your class, I mean, this will give it to you. You'll be able to like, just hop on an enemy immediately with this, even if it doesn't deal a lot of damage. Um, so Rigid Shell is Physique, Armor, and Lightning Res. Like I mentioned before, if you need the res, that's where you go. 
Rolling Blood is percent physical damage and some offensive ability. I don't think I've ever used Rolling Blood in armor um, or in stuff at all. Uh, it's just mostly used for crafting. Rotten Heart goes in your chest piece. You deal more chaos and poison damage. You have some more offensive ability and a bit of acid retaliation. If you have a, a heavy, a heavily invested occultist in those damages, you might want to go for a Rotten Heart. The Rune Stone is kind of a go-to headpiece. Um, elemental damage, armor, and elemental res. I mean, it's a go-to if you deal elemental damage at all, but it's also really handy because it gives you that damage coupled with the resistances. This character has that. Um, so, uh, yeah, Sanctified Bone is awesome. Chest and head armor. Sanctified Bone gives you vitality and chaos res and more damage to undead and chthonics. Really, really great um, all-rounder component for those resistance, resistances and you will encounter undead and chthonics um, throughout the game. So, yeah, it's a very, very good piece of um, component, especially for the chest piece. Or Well, it can go in both. You could do both. It just works really well. Scaled Hide is armor and armor absorption. If I'm making a tank, I would maybe consider this for chest or leg armor. Otherwise, you probably aren't going to use much of it. Scavenge Plating is a basic plus 15 armor. Again, I don't think I've ever actually used it because it, its usefulness quickly just drops off after a certain point. Most It is mostly used for crafting. Searing Umber gives you Fire Blast. I mentioned Fire Blast before with Greater Fire Blast. This is just the earlier version. Um, serrated Shell gives you Shield... It reduces your shield recovery time, gives you some pierce retaliation, all retaliation, and it gives you brutal shield slam, which is like the bigger, badder version of a shield slam. Um, pretty much a straight, it's not a straight upgrade to the battered shell. You could probably go either way on it, depending on what you need, more shield um, block chance, or if you want the shield recovery time reduced. Generally speaking though, I'd probably lean serrated shell. Um, Serrated Spike gives you Pierce and Bleed damage, and it gives you the Piercing Aura, which is more Pierce damage dealt by you and anything else affected by it. Um, severed Claws. Uh, oh, I don't have a complete one. I don't think they give you an ability. It is physical and internal trauma damage. It's sort of an all-rounder thing for your physical inter internal trauma damage um, characters. Silk Swatch. I have a complete one in his pants. So it's Pierce and Bleed Res. And Pierce and Bleed Res. Um, bleeding Res is kind of hard to get, in my opinion. So having it on a component, easily access on a component, um, is pretty nice. And he's wearing two. I obviously use them a lot. <laughs> soul Shard, Vitality Damage, Energy Absorption, Vitality Res, Life Leech Res. It's like the Aether Soul and Black Tallow, but for Vitality Damage. Spine Carapace, armor, pierce retaliation, percent all retaliation. If you're building a retaliation build, that that's what you're probably going to end up using in all the armor pieces um, you have available to use it in. Vengeful Wrath, cold damage, frostburn damage, offensive ability, cold retaliation. Mm, I don't know if I'd ever actually use it in, in those pieces. I think there are better things to use, but if you want the extra cold damage, um, then by all means, go for it. Venom Tipped Ammo gives you Noxious Poison Bomb, sort of the big version of the Poison Bomb I mentioned earlier. Uh, vicious Spikes is just piercing damage. Um, or no, uh, Vicious Jawbone is physical and internal trauma damage with cunning and attack speed. Um, if you are making a physical internal trauma damage build, you're probably going to end up using this in both your amulet and your metal. Vicious Spikes gives you pierce damage and gives you the empowered piercing aura which is the bigger version of the piercing aura serrated spike gives you vitriolic gallstone gives you the poison aura this is your go-to melee shield offhand for poison damage um it acts exactly like all of the other auras do um just for poison Void Touched Ammo is Chaos Damage and Percent Chaos Damage and Physical Converted to Chaos Damage. It gives you Chaos Bolt, which um, is sort of like three projectiles, sort of in a cluster bomb type of thing, for what I recall. Um, they'll hit and deal the Chaos Damage. Um, not super strong, but if you need a Chaos Main Attack, you could end up using that. A Ward Stone goes in Amulet and Metals. It's Elemental and Bleeding Resistance. If you need those resistances and you have those slots open, you could go for Ward Stones. 
And then finally for the common ones, we have the Wrath Stone, which is the Aether version of all the other stones I've mentioned. It gives you Aether Aura. It gives you a tiny bit of Aether Retaliation because it's a special thing. So I'm going to take a sip of water. Okay. On the rare onto the rare ones. So, Ancient Armor Plate used to be one of my go-tos. It's still really solid. Um, physique armor and percent armor is actually not that bad to give a heavy piece of armor. So chest and leg armor that's heavier, ancient armor plate could probably be really good for it because of the percent armor on it. Arcane lens is flat and percent elemental damage, percent spirit, and some skill energy cost reduction. I mentioned with focusing prism that I prefer arcane lenses a bit more. They don't give you the crit damage, but they give you um, percent spirit instead of flat spirit which end game is a little better and they give you the nice uh, flat and percent elemental damage on top of having the skill cost reduction arcane spark amulet of metal again energy leech um, that happens when you hit a, an attack that deals weapon damage and then you get offensive ability a good chunk of it um 36 is actually quite a bit for a component and you get 20 percent energy regen really handy if you need that energy regen but it's also not a bad component just in general Mostly because of the offensive ability. So, a tuned lodestone. Um, a tuned lodestone goes in amulets and metals, and a lot of characters are going to just end up using this because of the percent all damage and the crit damage. Even if you're not a lightning character, that's still really good on top of having this static charge thing, which, um, you know, when you're hit by melee attacks, it does like a nova and it deals lightning damage and stuns. I might actually put it on this character now that I'm really thinking about it. Um, bindings of Bismeal are all damage, defensive ability, energy regen, and it gives you um, a passive bonus to your pets, all damage and health. If you have pets, you're probably going to be throwing this in your chest piece. So the Bloody Wet Stone is sort of the big boy version of the Blessed Wet Stone. Kind of a funny, funny way to go from Blessed to Bloody. Then again, that actually makes sense if you think about it. Um, it gives you Decapitate, which is essentially the um, bigger version of Behead. Again, physical, bleed build, probably going to end up using it. Chains of Valyrian is another chest piece only um, rare component. All damage, offensive ability, percent offensive ability, reduced entrapment duration. Um, if you need the offensive ability, I would go for it. Generally speaking, though, I'm, I lean more defensive for my components. But still, it, it works if you need um, a more offensive um, chest piece component. These used to be ridiculous when they used to give you plus one to... At first, it was all skills in a tree, and it was plus one to... I think it was a combination of two skills. Oh, plus one to each. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's irrelevant now. So, Devil Touched Ammo is a fire and chaos uh, ammo type... It gives you the Demon's Breath ability, which is sort of like you shoot it out and it sort of goes along the ground in a straight line. It um, deals fire and chaos damage. So if you're playing a character that's, well, if you're playing a Pyromancer um, and you want an ability that deals both those damages, uh, you're probably going to lean towards the Devil Touched Ammo. And even if you don't use the ability, it's not bad for the DPS uh, side of things, the offensive side of things for those damages. Dread Skull gives you Pierce and Vit and Bleed damage, um, attack speed and movement speed. It's great for Blade Master types. It's great for bleeding builds. It's great for vitality or Pierce builds, um, especially if you're based around attacking things with an actual attack. Um, it's also great because of that movement speed bonus, and it'll get your character hurrying along and generally swinging their weapon faster. So Hallowed Ground is sort of the defensive version, um, the defensive side between Chains and Hallowed Ground. Um, Hallowed Ground gives you the defensive ability, energy regen, and elemental res. It's actually a pretty good chest piece, um, chest piece pick. The uh, defensive ability is not the best thing on here you definitely want the energy you want it for that energy regen and for that elemental res um pretty solid chest piece to pick haunted steel is um the big boy version of hallowed fang it gives you blood thirster which is more um attack damage converted to health it's vitality damage based just like um 
just like Hallowed Fang. It just doesn't have the conversion. Not that you would need it for a Vitality build. But yeah, you'll get a bigger, better... Um, bigger, better bit of lifesteal. Kilrian Shattered Soul is a chest piece component. It has fire and vitality damage, percent attack speed and vitality res, and it has the ability called Kilrian's Flame, 10% chance when hit by a melee attack. Um, you sort of glow purple and you'll deal um, fire. You'll get more... Um, no, it will deal. I, I'm like sitting kind of back, and that almost looks like percents. So it deals um, fire damage and vitality damage, sort of to things directly around you, and then that damage converts to health. Um, really handy if you have those damage types. Um, I actually have it on my Albrecht's Aether Ray guy because the Aether Ray does deal fire vitality. Um, it's also helpful if you want those damage types boosted a little bit, and you need vitality res. The proc is actually not that bad. Um, it does require enemies pretty much right on top of you, though, to get the full benefit of it. Mark of Dreeg is a poison acid um, component, but it also has the um, reduced target's resistances for five seconds. It's kind of handy for everyone, but uh, you're still mostly going to be using this in a poison build. It Its ability, Dreeg's Infinite Gaze, um, you sort of launch missiles out in a fan in all directions if you are using a poison build it's actually really handy um not much more i can say about that if you use dreeg's evil eye and vitriolic gallstone you'll basically have a good um damage boost so mark of mog dragon is percent health health regen and movement speed sort of a cousin i wouldn't say it's the big boy version to mark of the traveler um it is more of a cousin to it, because Mark of the Traveler gives you a little more movement speed and has the slow res. This has the percent health, um, which is probably better, but I mean, if you want a little more movement speed, you'd probably lean towards Mark of the Traveler. That and Mark of the Traveler is way easier to acquire. This has some pretty steep um, crafting. Um, not really, really steep, but steep. Steeper than I'd, I'd want. Um, so I usually just go for Mark of the Traveler. So Mark of the Myrmidon goes in shields. You get um, health, defensive ability, shield recovery time is reduced, and you reflect some damage. You get Blade Barrier, which you activate, and this is sort of the bigger version of... What was it again? It's not Piercing Aura. Not Brutal Shield Slam. Um, do -do 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 -do. I don't remember what it was. Um, it was like Blade Ward or something. I don't remember. Anyways, um, yeah, this is, uh, you gain... Actually, it might be its own thing, now that I think about it. But anyways, um, you will gain more Pierce damage for you, and then you also gain some Pierce res and some Pierce Retaliation. Mark the Myrmidon is kind of a weird one. It's like a Retaliator build thing, but not... It's like a shield build thing, but still has a retaliation theme. It's kind of weird to me. Um, I don't think I found a spot for it, but uh, maybe you will. So uh, give it a try. Alirin's blood is used in weapons, physical damage, internal trauma damage, offensive ability, and total speed. Um, and it has Alirin's might. It's sort of a big smack one thing and deal a lot of damage to it. Attack. Um, it deals a lot of damage, especially if you have physical and internal trauma damages, your damage types. Pretty much, This is pretty much what you're going to be using, though, if you're building physical internal trauma damage uh, for your weapon component. The, uh, the total speed is actually a really nice bonus as well. So if you're not even specifically on those two damages, if you're doing something in melee with physical damage, you might want to pick it up anyways. Um, it's sort of a harder thing to craft, too, if I recall correctly. Um, Prismatic Diamond is sort of a grown-up version of the Rune Stone. You'll get elemental damage, energy absorption, um, percent element, percent elemental resistance. You'll reflect damage, and you get the ability Prismatic Rage. Activates when you drop below forty percent. You'll get a giant increase in your all damage and total speed. Um, the only reason I don't use this one more is it is a little on the dif difficult side to craft, and Rune Stones have always been there for me, anyways. Um, I wouldn't discount it though. It's still a really potent um, head component. 
Shard of Baroneth is elemental damage, all damage, fizz converted elemental, and some offensive ability um, used in melee weapons. This grants you the ability Baroneth's Fury, which is a basic attack replacement ability. Um, you'll build up seven charges, which will add a multiplier on your damage with your attacks, and it will multiply the benefits that it provides you. When you have all seven charges, you're actually dealing a lot of damage with this. This is great for a warrior mage type character, a character based around elemental damage and swinging their weapon. Um, you could probably use this a lot with you're sitting there and you're swinging away at things, dropping Trojan Sky Shards. You're swinging away at things. You're using, like, what, Kalidor's Tempest with Wrath of Agarex mode. You're swinging away at things and you have totems. Um, it's a pretty solid thing if you are a melee elementalist type. So, Silver Core Bolts go in guns, crossbows, and caster offhands. They have bonus piercing damage, damage to the Chthonics. They reduce target's defensive ability, and it gives you the ability um, Silver Spread. Um, I don't think I've actually used this ability. It's sort of a very specific build you would make it for. You would want a piercing weapon, either one or two-handed. Um, and this would probably be worked in with your other abilities. I think it's like a fan of knives type of thing. Um, and it deals piercing damage, more dam a lot more damage to Jathonix though. So spell open threads are a great caster go-to for hand armor. Um, you uh, you get some burn, frost burn, and electrocute damage, basically the elemental burns. Spirit, offensive ability, and casting speed. When I said Restless Remains, um, there are better things you could choose from. I was thinking of Spellwoven Threads. Um, I tend to go for it if I'm doing more DPS from my hand slot, or if I want more DPS on the hand slot. Um, the other alternative would be the Unholy Inscription. Um, Unholy Inscription is Vitality Damage, Offensive Ability, but it gives you Vitality and Bleed Res, so it's good for um, good for getting those resistances built up. And I know Symbol of Solel is in between those. So Symbol of Solel is Chaos Damage, Physical Damage Converted to Chaos Damage, and Energy Absorption, and Solel's Flame. Um, you sort of, it's almost like a curse. You'll hit the thing and it goes like, Burk, and it deals chaos damage to it. If you are built for chaos damage or converting chaos damage to Aether, it's something to consider doing, especially because of the reduced target's resistances for one second. Hit them with Solaris Flame, hit them with your main attack is essentially how that works. So, I believe I just went through all of the components and sort of how they're used. Most of the auras are going to be go-tos, and then a lot of elemental, or I shouldn't say elemental, just a lot of resistance-based ones are kind of your go-tos as well. I highly recommend hoarding up things like mutated scales, silk swatches, um, spell woven threads, and holy inscriptions, and a lot of the rarer ones as well. Um, you can pretty much craft almost everything. There are a couple you can't, like Kilri and Shattered Soul, you cannot craft at all. It only drops off of Kilrian. Um, there might be one or two um, more like that, but uh, you'll be able to craft pretty much everything else. Um, some of them require blueprints, and then there's obviously the common and the rare. So, whew. thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time.